My name is Mauro de la Tierra. I'm a community-made artist from the east side of San Antonio, and this is Una Plática. One of the biggest reasons why I decided to pursue art was Albert Gonzalez. He was not only my mentor, but he was a very great friend to me during like some of the hardest times in my life. And he definitely taught me to believe in myself and to kind of give me the necessary push and motivation to pursue art and really see it as a possibility. I do identify as a Chicano artist. I think it's important to recognize that it's a form of resistance against systemic color and class oppression. I, one of my favorite things about San Antonio art is just the, like how authentic it is. I feel like there's really a representation and voice and character and I feel really lucky to be a part of this community. One of the things that I expect from audiences when they see my work is I hope that it kind of encourages and challenges like the misconceptions of what we find normal in society. I, I do a lot of like artwork that kind of like tackles and challenges, um, you know, global and systemic issues. So one of the reasons why I really try to create art is to kind of like open those uh, narratives and conversations for people to kind of, um, kind of like a ripple for change, you know? Yes, I believe it's important to have organizations like Centro Cultural Etzlan because um, it's very important to empower culture and community. Um, I think that the space really nurtures that. And um, yeah, it's just uh, important to have a space where we can have authentic art. Some advice that I would give to like, whether it's like a younger person or anyone who's like kind of interested in pursuing art is uh, my biggest advice is just just do it. Like there's nothing more to it than just like actually be consistent, be willing to sacrifice, um, invest back into your community, definitely engage and support other artists. Um, I know that there's like a big sense of like fear that kind of limits us as people. It, you know, not just for art, but for all things in life. And I think that um, the biggest thing you can do is just kind of welcome mistakes and things will happen naturally. And I mean, if you mess up, like take it as a learning lesson and just like keep doing it, you know, like uh, it feels like kind of daunting to some degree, like creating a piece and like showing your art somewhere. But at the same time, it's like it's always good to remind yourself that this isn't the last thing you're going to do. Like just keep doing it and embrace everything. So these two pieces right here, I specifically made for Segundo de Febrero. Um, I was invited by the curator Mauro Murillo to do this exhibition. And he kind of just told me a bit of the history of the space. And he gave me sort of some themes to pursue. And so what I really wanted to do is kind of create a dialogue that explored um, like topics about immigration, about classism, about culture and identity. Um, they were very much inspired by my recent travels to Brownsville and McAllen, Texas. I worked with a couple of nonprofit organizations called Voces Unidas and Keep McAllen Beautiful. And you know, as a first generation Mexican American, I was I grew up mostly in San Antonio, and. Uh, 
you know, my, um, a lot of my family, they're undocumented and stuff. And uh, I guess there's always like a constant dread that kind of comes with that, like a sort of uh, anxiety that comes with that. But I think, you know, being older and like getting to see like the actual border towns and like seeing like the, like, uh, like the border presence and hearing more about like the corruption that happens out there from speaking to local individuals. I had to kind of create a piece or two pieces that kind of, you know, explore those topics. So on one side, I wanted to depict the border patrol as the devil. And, uh, you know, it kind of takes inspiration from like the Loteria cards and stuff like that. And uh, on one side, I really wanted to represent sort of like oppression and uh, neglect that is kind of happening. So if you look, he's holding a red-throated hummingbird. And those are um, birds that migrate from Latino America to here. And it's a very natural process, you know? So in a way, he's like holding it. And if you look, the land is barren, the river's polluted. And in the background, you can see SpaceX because of um, like their experimentation, it's been affecting a lot of the wildlife out there. And I wanted to kind of reflect that and how like the different accommodations that you see with the land. So you see that there's like no plants. The only plant you see is a rose that's kind of like falling apart. And then there's uh, the Santa Muerte to kind of represent that this one is death. And then on this one, I kind of wanted to do more about like a symbol of resistance, liberation and freedom. You can see that the red-throated hummingbird is flying freely through the sky. And uh, I really wanted to have like the indigenous gods that were here before colonial times. And so it's kind of like flying freely. And you can see that the nature is a bit more like thriving and stuff. And so he's kind of praying to kind of like reconnect with your roots and stuff. And I think that connecting with your culture is one of the most important ways of resistance to like a society and system that doesn't nurture that, you know? And I wanted to also include the ocelot. Um, and I painted him green to kind of represent like the natural spirit of the river. Um, so here the creature ocelot is there. And then I also wanted to kind of incorporate like a like uh, my mom's culture, um, like Saltillo and stuff like that. So one of my memories is like seeing Serapis out there and stuff like that. So I really wanted to incorporate that. And so, yeah, just definitely this one represents like death, oppression. And then this one is liberation and freedom.